Next, I would like to invite Annie Isaac from MMBS Area Secretary of Southeast Region Florida area. And I would like her to introduce our speaker for the secondary address. Thank you, Gina. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. Today, we are honored with the opportunity to listen to Dr. Alexander Jacob IPS, who needs no introduction, especially to Malayalis. A very popular gifted orator, a bibliolator with photographic memory, and a very esteemed IPS officer. Above all, a great personality who values humanity and secularism. He has won many meritorious awards and is honored with the title, the most outstanding young personality of India. Today, I have a special privilege to welcome Dr. Alexander Jacob, who hails from Tumbaman, which is also my native. Also, his mother happened to be my father's teacher. On behalf of all members of MMVS Southwest America, and on my own behalf, may I extend a warm welcome to you, sir. His Grace uh, Bishop April, Father PC George, all the distinguished uh, members of the Mathamariam Sabajam who are attending this meeting, and uh, Srimadhi Ani Isaac, who is my immediate neighbor and a relative of mine from Tumbaman, who introduced me. Mathamariam Sabajam is uh, having a three day seminar elaborating on a specific topic. And I wish this uh, great meeting all success. Today, I wish to come to you explaining this subject with a specific mention of the Mariams in the Bible. There are 10 Mariams in the Bible, two in the Old Testament and eight Mariams in the New Testament. The meaning of the word Mariam itself shows that great evolution. The first Mariam or Miriam mentioned in the Bible is a sister of Moses, 1300 BC, roughly. And the word has a hamitic origin, or it has come from the hieroglyphics or the Egyptian language, where Maria means beloved, the most beloved one. But later, this word shifted into Hebrew in the near centuries of Jesus Christ. At that time, in the Hebrew, the meaning of the word Mariam changed. It meant bitterness. You must all remember the Mara, the place where the bitter, salty water was found for them. It meant bitterness. But by the time the New Testament ended, it entered Greek and Latin. And it got a derived meaning, Moriomo. Moriomo means the Holy One. So the transformation of the meaning of the word Mariam itself is something which we all should understand. The Miriam, the sister of Moses, was a very great contributor to the great Exodus journey. When Moses was kept in the water in a basket, using the papyrus paste, they made it uh, waterproof. It was flowing down. Miriam was entrusted with the task of seeing the child flowing down to find out what happened to the child. She traveled through the bushes, infested with crocodiles, risking her life, and ultimately found out Moses was saved by the future queen of uh, Egypt. Many historians say she was Harshaput, the first uh, woman ruler of the world. Disputed theory, anyhow. So she was principally responsible. And when the Exodus journey happened, she led the way in front of the Jewish population of six lakh. 
and uh, led the whole uh, journey in front. That's the greatness of Maryam. The second Maryam in the Bible comes in the book of Ezra or the second Chronicles. Ezra was the great uh, prophet who is called the father of Jewish education. Israel was uh, in captivity in Babylon from where Cyrus rescued them in 539 BC. And when they were rescued, Cyrus permitted them to go back to Jerusalem. And they were led by Zerubbabel, the great leader, and they came back uh, to Israel. And Ezra credited Cyrus with the great uh, word of Messiah. So there are two Mariams in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, there are eight Mariams, of which seven Mariams are connected with Jesus Christ. Vajana Mamsamaya, Yeshu Nod Oppam Nunna, Atma Vil Velapata, Spiritualai Vyarna, Yed Mariamagala. First one is undoubtedly the the this the seven Mariams are classified into three mother Mariams, one sister Mariam, one wife Mariam, one companion Mariam, and a nurse Mariam. These are the qualifications of the seven Mariams who directly dealt with Jesus Christ in different parts of his life. The greatest one is of course Mother Mariam, the mother of Jesus Christ. The mother of Jesus Christ, how she was filled with the spirits, spirituality, spiritual enlightenment, when uh, the angel Gabriel came to her and she accepted the great decision. A virgin woman getting pre pregnant is something which merited death penalty. She would have been stoned to death. But in spite of that, she accepted from angel, the great blessing. And Logos entered her body and Christ was born. And whenever Logos enters, Vajanam, Jadam Yanganayana, The whole story is given in the Bible. I need not repeat it to you. So she got the spiritual renewal and she carried the child, delivered that child, and the Jesus' great journey started in the Bible. The second mother, Mariam, is the mother of James. She was one woman who accompanied Jesus in his uh, prophetic journey. And one day she asked uh, Jesus, when you come in your greatness, my eldest son should be on your right side and my youngest son should be on your left side. Jesus must have smiled and he told her, my dear woman, you don't know what you're asking for. Because Jesus knew the cross, the, the cross he had to carry to Golgotha. But look at the change this Mariam had. Accompanying Jesus, she went up to Golgotha and she was one of the women standing below the cross receiving their blessings from Jesus Christ. The third Mariam, the third mother Mariam, is the mother of John Mark. Many historians say it is the same Mark who wrote the first gospel, second, uh, listed as second in the Bible, but actually according to the time of its writing, it was the first uh, gospel. But that Mariam, was the hostess for the ceremony of the Pesaha. The, <clears throat> the Holy Kurbana was founded on that Pesaha day. Many of us are uh, confused by the last supper picture of Leono da Vinci. But in reality, this is the, uh, the Holy Kurbana was born there. And this Mariam was the hostess of that ceremony, according to the majority of the historians. So the three mother Mariams, the mother of Jesus, mother of James, 
and mother of Mark. All the three mothers played distinguished jobs during the prophetic journey of Jesus Christ. Then comes the wife Mariam. That wife Mariam was the wife of Cleopas. Cleopas was Jesus' mother's cousin. And the Mariam also was a relative. And Cleopas' wife Mariam accompanied Jesus in his prophetic journeys and ultimately led her to Golgotha, one of the standing Mariams below the cross. This journey was splendid. And the next one is Sister Mariam. That Mariam was the sister of Martha and Lazar in Bethany. The peculiarity of that Mariam was she was a very good listener of the gospel, which is uh, said by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came her home frequently. In Jewish society, a rabbi shall not live in a house where women are present. But Jesus Christ came to Bethany, lived there, and his journeys into Jerusalem was from that house. When Jesus came to that house, Mary listened to the gospel. Martha was busy preparing the food for Jesus Christ. And Martha complained, look, I am doing all the kitchen work and this lady is sitting near you. Please advise her to come and help me in the kitchen. And all of you know the famous reply of Jesus Christ. What is necessary is the role played by Mary. And uh, she got that spiritual enlightenment by listening into the Logos incarnate on this world, Jesus Christ. When Lazarus died and when the third day Jesus Christ came, Martha came rushing to him. So look at Mary, she was very mute. She didn't come out of the house. She remained there only. She knew deliverance will come. And Jesus Christ resurrected Lazarus. And the great story. The sister Mary. The sister of Martha and Lazarus. And the sixth one was the companion Mary. We usually call her Mary Magdalene. She came from the fishing village of Magdala. And uh, she was a companion of uh, Jesus. The additional qualification was given to her by Mark in his gospel. He says, this is the same woman from whom seven demons were exorcised earlier. That identification. But unfortunately for her, a mistaken identity came that she was the fallen woman or a prostitute. It was a mistake committed by a pope of the Catholic Church who lived in the 7th century AD. Without cross-checking, he made that statement which maligned her for the next 13 centuries. And when Vallathol wrote Magdalena Mariam, she was pictured as a prostitute woman who got uh, <coughs> saved by Jesus Christ. A completely false identity. Malayala literature got that particular entry. A lot of research have gone on her. And we say in the Bible itself, she is told the, the woman from the city. She came from a wealthy family. She was a companion of the steward of Herod Antipas's wife, Joanna. So the companion of uh, the steward of the ruling king. Herod and the pastor's wife. That was her position. She was closely related to Caiaphas. And Gethsemane, the garden, belonged to her. She was the chief financier of the, of the Christian movement in the, in the first 30 years after Jesus Christ. This is what modern research shows. Who was she? Unfortunately, maligned for 30 centuries. But look at the blessing Jesus gave her. She was the first witness of resurrected Jesus. On the third day when Jesus resurrected, 
Jesus gave her the chance to see her first, see him first. Not his mother, not his twelve disciples, not his closest friends, nobody. Why did he reserve that right to her? It's a great theological question. I don't uh, get into that big uh, theological question. But there is another woman who accompanied Mary Magdalene. That is Mariam, the mother of James. So two Mariams went to the tomb, of which Mary Magdalena had the chance to see the resurrected Jesus for the first time. That was the blessings given to her by Jesus. She got up by 4 a.m. in the morning, prepared everything, and traveled around three kilometers through the thick and thin of the Jewish community. The disciples were hiding in, in, a, in a place, fearing the Jews. But look at a woman, absolutely fearless. She walked through the heart of the Jewish city, ready to face anything, and reached the tomb before 6 a.m. She didn't know who will roll the stone away, but that was the faith with which she came. And modern research have rescued her, great companion of Jesus. And the seventh one was a nurse who was supposed to be the fallen woman. Fallen woman is an interpretation. She came with a costly ointment, costly scent, washed the feet of Jesus. And then wiped that thing with her hair. And interpretations went on saying that she was the fallen woman, which was mistakenly given by Pope to Mary Magdalene. This lady was different. So seven Marys met with logos, which became flesh, according to Saint John, John's Gospel. Vajana Mamsumai Namorapam Vasichapal. Seven Marys went and met him. And all the seven got spiritual enlightenment from Jesus. All the seven Marys who met Jesus got the enlightenment. Mother Mary, of course, everybody knows. And when Nanmadar and Mariam, that famous prayer was coined by the church. The first sentence of Narmada Mariame is a sentence told to her by Angel Gabriel. The second sentence is a sentence told by Elizabeth, the wife of Prophet uh, the priest Sakaria, to her when Maria went to meet her. And the third sentence is a famous declaration of the Ephesus Synod of 14, 431. So three great sentences put together. In the rosary, we have Narman Nanmadaranja Maria. Wonderful spiritual enlightenment. Mother of James got wonderful enlightenment, and she stood below the cross, getting that blessings from the Jesus. And in Ben Har, the famous film, that scene is shown how the ladies standing below the cross, they suddenly found an enlightenment came uh, coming to them. And the leper woman got cured because the blood of Jesus flowed from the cross. And in the little rain, it came and washed the feet of the women standing below. All of them got that physical as well as spiritual enlightenment. Mother of Mark, who was the hostess of the, of the Pascha meeting, got the blessing because the Holy Kubana was inaugurated there and the spiritual enlightenment which comes to everybody who attend a Kurbana. As the respectable priest was explaining to you in a wonderful uh, speech, the first recipient of that was this lady, the mother of Mark, immediately after the disciples, she got the chance to do it. Mary, the sister of Martha, got the spiritual enlightenment. Whenever Jesus came to them, she got that enlightenment. And with the power of God, 
the death Lazarus was resurrected. And we have Mary Magdalene getting all the blessings all throughout. And the fallen Mariam, who washed the feet of Jesus Christ, got all her sins cured. And according to the tradition of the Christian church, she became a holy lady in the first channels of the church. Look at all the seven Marys who saw logos which became flesh and lived with us as Jesus Christ. And the eighth Mary in the New Testament is the Mary referred by Saint Paul in the Epistle of Romans. He says, Mary came to him and uh, greeted him and he gave the greetings back. That was with uh, Saint Paul in his journeys, reference to Mary. So there are 10 Marys in the Bible, two in the Old Testament, seven in the New Testament who had direct relation with the Jesus Christ. And last Mary had no direct relation with Jesus Christ, but she had relations with, uh, uh, she was a hostess for Saint Paul in his journeys. So the life of Marys teach the women who are attending this Martha Mariam conference a great lesson. What is that lesson? That lesson is women in the Jewish community were not a respected lot. It was a male chauvinistic society, male dominated society. Women had not much place. And look at the divorce laws of the Jews. A woman can be divorced if salt is more in the curry prepared by her. A woman can be divorced if she speaks loud enough so that a neighbor could hear what she says. A wife could be divorced if she quarrels with the husband. Look at the 12 divorce laws women suffered in the Jewish community. No rabbi can come and do the prayers in the Jerusalem church if she, if he sees a woman on the way to the to the temple. Women are uh, no rabbis will come and stay in a woman uh, in a house where a woman is present. Jesus Christ relieved all the women from all the sufferings. And he was the first woman women emancipator in world history. She allowed the women to come into the society without covering their face and head. He allowed the women, women to come and listen to his uh, speeches. He allowed the women to come near him and get all the blessings. So he liberated the women. And any woman who came to him, any woman who came to him, he gave the blessings and spiritually enlightened them. That is the greatness of uh, Jesus. So your theme today is something very special to women. All Martha Marie women should understand from theology and philosophy and a simple reading of the Bible that Logos, which became flesh, called Jesus Christ, is the only method through which spiritual enlightenment can be there for human beings. And the seven Mariams in the Bible directly show the incidents and prove to us that. Jesus Christ, the God incarnate, really gives us spiritual enlightenment through which our life on this earth as well as life after life also will be enriched. Each of the ten Mariams teaches a lesson. How the Hamitic Egyptian word, which means beloved, became bitterness in Hebrew and later became Moriomo, that is the blessed one. Any woman can reach that blessed state. And in Catholic Church, when saints are declared, it is a very special thing. The number of women who go 14% of the total number. So that is something great. Any woman can get this spiritual enlightenment from God if they believe in Christ 
if you participate in the holy kurbana and you are willing to receive the enlighten from jesus christ the logos which became flesh this is a great lesson we have to learn all women have to learn from the stories and the incidents in the bible my speech was supposed to end at 9:30 this is uh, 9:30 indian standard time and as a police officer i have to be punctual so i conclude my speech with all the best wishes to all the participants in this mathamaria meeting throughout united states of america thank you Thank you so much Dr. Alexander Jacob for being here and sharing your words of wisdom.